I'm going to draw the electrical symbol for an inductor, which is... And this is meant to represent a coil of wire, so it's a coil of wire. And in electrical circuits, it will be something like this, which is a coil of wire, copper wire, presumably, wound on a plastic former, and you can see all the wires in there. In the old days of radio sets, which had capacitors and resistors before module digital stuff came along, you would see in the back of a radio something like that with a ferrite rod running through it, and it would be joined to a capacitor and make a tuned circuit, and you'd know that this is a coil. But these days, people can't take radios to pieces, so they don't actually realise that it's a simple coil of wire. And a simple coil of wire like that has strange properties. Let me take this simple compass needle, and the red is where it's pointing north. Now, if I put a coil of wire with a current passing through it, a current passing through it causes the needle to move. It's a source of magnetic field. What happened next was that somebody called Faraday, also Henry in the United States of America, discovered the laws of electromagnetism. This is a, a, a method of visualising the magnetic field around a bar magnet. And this coil of wire behaves in some ways like a bar magnet. In, in my youth, we used to put iron filings onto a bit of paper and put a magnet underneath, and they'd all line up. But if I shake this around a bit, we'll get all the iron filings in solution to be dispersed. And you will see that after a while, the iron filings attracted to both ends of the bar magnet can I turn it over and then it'll fall over? I like playing. This is just fun. OK, so I've got a north pole here. I can tell it's a north. The other side's got an S written on it. We'll have a north pole uh, coming towards this coil of wire. And this is a coil. Actually, it's more than you can see here. This is just one layer, and there are four layers of this coil. So that makes it a bit bigger. I take this, ne I to be my lawful <laughs> wedding wife, I take this neodymium magnet and put it near the coil, and the magnetic field goes through this coil. It, it penetrates the whole coil. And as it does so, you see you get a deflection on here. And as I take it out, it goes the other way. So I can make the effect a bit bigger. This is an iron horseshoe, and it will trap the magnetic field much better than this. Only I, every time I do this, I forget that this will be sucked onto the iron, so I'm going to hurt myself by putting it down. And that actually increases the magnitude of the, th the effect. And I'm not letting it hit because my friend George has taught me how to do this. So the next stage, once you've invented that, you know that changing the magnetic field across a coil creates an electromagnetic force, a voltage, an oscillating voltage. And if you were to take a north and a south pole and put a coil in there and twist it around, that would have the same effect and you would then generate electricity. That's the basis of power stations rotating a coil inside a magnetic field and turning it into the mains which powers our homes. So this simple invention by Faraday is the basis of most of Western civilization in terms of electrical supply. There's another thing you can do. You can have another coil. This is coil number one, coil number two, or normally that's called the prime. Uh, this is called the primary and that's called the secondary. So I'm going to join those together. They're not electrically joined. These are coupled together because I'm going to create a magnetic field in the iron bar, which will go from there underneath and through back up there. The magnetic field wants to be trapped inside the iron. So I'm now going to do the same thing. I'm going to switch on uh, the current in this coil. The current in this coil produces a magnetic field. The magnetic field travels through this, goes up through that coil, and the change in magnetic field inside this coil produces a magnetic effect, an EMF there. So if you watch this, I'll just touch it. And you can see you get a little effect. And there is no direct current passing through the coil. I can make the effect even bigger if I put another bit of metal over the top, like that. And now we've got a complete ring of iron going round, which will form a magnetic domain. So now when I touch it, and I can get an electric shock for this, so don't try it at home. This is just a simple battery. And now I'm going to press that on there. 
and you can see how much bigger the effect is. Now, Brady, look at this. As I take it off, this will light up. There's a back EMF. As I get closer and I take it off, I get a little flash. That's the back EMF. When you break the circuit, there is a voltage that is extremely large there. In fact, um, we estimated yesterday it's about 100 volts, and that gives you a nasty jolt. In fact, the first time I did it, and I was touching everything, it threw me backwards. This device is called a transformer. It means that you can put a voltage in through this mechanism, this battery. A changing voltage in here will then change into a voltage across there. And depending on the number of turns of this coil and the number of turns of that one, you'll change the voltage from, say, 240 volts down to 12, or the other way around. You transform the voltage. So you will find this on your digital uh, DAB radio. You find it comes out of the mains at 240 volts. You have to put it through a transformer, and it turns it down to 12 volts, and the whole thing heats up all the time. At least I do.